One of the cancers that you talk about in the Dog Cancer Survival Guide is oral cancers, cancers of the mouth. Um, Dr. Dressler, if you're looking at a dog who has oral cancer, what are the signs and symptoms that you might be seeing? Well, I'll be honest, these tumors are most commonly, at least in my experience, found by veterinarians dur during a physical exam. And the reason for this is that it's only in the later stages where we see signs at home. Many times these tumors are just silently growing somewhere in the mouth, usually along the gum line or occasionally back in the tonsil area or on the roof of the mouth, the palate, occasionally under the tongue. And unless a guardian is really involved either in home dental care or just very, very tuned in to looking for things that are abnormal in the mouth, they usually won't actually find it. Now, in the late stages, it's true that there may be signs that are visible at home that a guardian could pick up. And these would include things like difficulty eating or drooling or possibly bleeding or sometimes even really bad breath as the top of the tumor starts to get a little bit broken down and starts to smell a little bit bad. Dr. Ettinger, your thoughts on oral cancers? Yeah, it's one of those that's frustrating for the guardian because they are often found late because, to be honest, who sticks their fingers in their dog's mouth all the time. So it can be frustrating. Um, you know, there's a couple of common malignant cancers that we see. Um, in general, excluding oral melanoma, most of the oral cancers tend to be what we call a local disease. So they tend to stay in the head and neck area and have lower spread rates. So most of the treatment options are gonna be focused on the cancer in the oral cavity and whether that's surgery or radiation. Those are the two main conventional um, treatment options that we'll think about for the, the main oral cancers, excluding oral melanoma. Dr. Dressler, what are some of the options that you look at when you're dealing with oral cancers? Yeah, in addition to the ones that Dr. Edinger brought up, we should also consider, especially with the melanomas, uh, uh, not only the, the chemotherapy, but additionally uh, the melanoma vaccine, uh, which is available uh, through oncologists, we can really, really help uh, with survival time. Uh, we've also got to make our dietary changes to a cancer-fighting diet. It's important to focus on supplementation with proper supplements, like the use of apotogens, which are plant-derived compounds that help to turn on cancer cell suicide, uh, immune support, uh, very, very important as well on the supplement front. And life quality enrichment, as usual, is such an important piece of cancer management so that we can really get uh, good life quality and take advantage of some altered brain chemistry uh, that uh, may be beneficial in helping uh, uh, canine cancer patients also conceivably. Dr. Dressler in Hawaii, Dr. Ettinger in New York, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank, thank you. you.